We've done a lot of saving of buildings here, and we're involved in the Chisk, and we're proud to be involved in that. But we want to take this city forward. You know, we want to show people where we're headed, and we think that this is a great opportunity to do that. Not only from an aesthetic pleasing standpoint about the skyline, but from the economic impact. You know, we are a hospitality town. That's what we do. We welcome people here, and so we want the opportunity to, to do that. Obviously, this is the first of a lot of steps, but where where do we kind of go from here? Where are the kind of the next steps ahead? Next step in our in our long run, of course, will be at uh, City Council hopefully in three or four weeks for Land Use Control Board uh, approval of their recommendation and we'll continue to move forward uh, along that process with the Downtown Business Commission uh, working towards a, a public-private partnership as well as getting our architects working on uh, kind of the, the drawing process. It's not cheap to do. It's not cheap. <laughs> what do you hope to have a final design plan in place? You know, that's hard to say. Of course, as we move through these um, different kind of uh, processes in the development phase as far as approvals and entitlements. Um, we'll continue to make steps forward in, in the design process, but um, certainly if we hit everything like we'd like to, you know, I, I guess the easiest thing to say on final plan is when will we start? We'd like to be starting next summer, you know, early next summer. That that would be the best case scenario. Moving dirt. Yeah. Moving dirt. Now you're talking about you have the opposition there, but you know, you obviously have to uh, attend to some of those things. Like, we want to be good neighbors. Uh, Dad was down here for 40 years as, as uh, the commercial bill uh, wonderfully wrote, you know, uh, starting with Beale Street Development and uh, Captain Bilbo's, which I'm sure some of you may or may not have frequented. And uh, and, and so always with, with him and, and what he passed on, we want to be good neighbors. It's important to take care of your neighborhood and, and take care of those around you. So we want to try and address that opposition as best as possible. However, a, a lot of those things are oppositions that were originally there in the first go round. We understand that we're going to impede some views, and we've done everything we can to try and make those buildings streamline and open up in between. Um, we understand that there's going to be some traffic impact, but as, as it was said, land use control work. Gosh, that's a good problem. To have. You know, we want downtown to be walkable and pedestrian friendly, but we also want to get people from in and out of town places to stay right on the river. Um, our best and greatest asset outside of our people is that riverfront, and we want to highlight that. And that's our that's our goal. Chance, we've seen the renderings. It looks like basically a glass building. Can you tell me about the materials and what it will look like other than the renderings? Sure. It's a little early to say on the skin. What we know now is that we're in a seismic three zone. So when you start driving pilings down that deep, um, you need to take weight off the building, and so we want to get to a project that's not cost prohibitive. And glass seems to be the easiest thing, to, not easiest. The, the only way to make the project move forward and, and not be cost prohibitive, if you start adding weight with brick veneer or brick itself, um, you know, we may not just be able to get there. So glass seems to be, also you get that beauty of that, you know, you know floor to ceiling glass inside the apartments as well as inside the hotel. And are you planning to, is there a chance you will go up to 450 feet? We want to allow ourselves the most flexibility as we go through design. You know, one of the reasons for the height of the building is, you know, when you hit different coding issues. So when you get above, you know, six stories, I believe, you go into a high-rise building. At that point, you have to pay for all the high-rise costs. And so you need to start finding ways to add revenue so the performer works out. We hope that we we are kind of where we are, but certainly want to allow ourselves flexibility to do that. A lot of people have, you know, there's been traffic issues with the pyramid since the Bass Pro Shop has opened up. But like we said inside, it's growing pains. That's, That's not right. necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. But Memphis seems to have trouble with that. We want new, we want big, but we also want to keep it kind of the way it is. Certainly. We, you know, we love our neighborhoods like Overton Square. Beautiful. Bob Logue and his group have done a fantastic job. And, you know, the first problem we had is, gosh, we've got this dilapidated marketplace that we loved in the 70s and 80s with TGI Fridays and all these great bars like Lafayette's. And then the next problem is, oh my gosh, we have way too much traffic. How are we going to solve for this? Um, we are going to do our best to address those issues through traffic studies. And we, like as said, we have completed a traffic study. Um, we're going to provide for on-site garage parking. Um, I think it's one thing we all know as downtowners is that you can never have too much parking. Um, but we're going to do the best we can to, to alleviate those concerns. And as you said, it's growing pains. Hopefully what we do is spur more development um, that can call for a higher dollar spend, which means we can get more subterranean and parking garages built under larger developments. You know, the Cindy mentioned about uh, access to the trolley stop and the bluff walk along the deal. Other than the already existing sidewalk, what are y'all thinking? 
Well, we've discussed several solutions. I don't know. I think I would tell you it's a little early before I'd want to say anything because I'd hate for the public to latch on one of many ideas out there. But we, what we think we have is an elegant solution. Uh, if, if you've ever been down there, you know, there's a there's a stair step on the west side of the bluff going down, to, literally down onto Riverside Drive, but there's no ADA accessibility. So if you're ADA, you've got to come down Linden, around uh, north on Wagner, and down on Beale Street. What we're proposing, what we think is the most elegant solution, is a flat surface moving down Tennessee Street, which is the River Walk, and then grading down next to one Beale right onto Beale Street. So no more having to walk all the way or roll all the way around Wagner and Linden and Beale Street, but straight on to Beale Street. What'd you get 